The new Storyboard Suite 3.0 has a number of great additions that will help you with the projects, like the animation timeline that makes animations easy. Image optimization tools have been added too. You can create and apply translations, custom shader support is available, and prototype for your iPad with the iOS export feature. Now let's take a closer look at some of these features in action. Creating animations with Storyboard 3.0 is simple with the new animation tools that have been added. Click the button for Record New Animation, and then any change you make within your project will be recorded as an animation step. Sliding objects around the screen, changing the alpha on an image, or making data changes all get recorded, and while you do this, variables are automatically assigned to these controls that are going to help you save on time. When you've finished, click the Stop Recording Animation button, and your animation steps will appear in the new timeline window. In the Animation Timeline view, you can individually change the start and stop of each step in your animation just by clicking and dragging the animation blocks. Creating better animations is now easier to do and just as easy to edit without it taking a long time. To add to an existing animation, just select the controls that you want to include, then right click and choose Animation Variables. This will show a list of variables from selected controls and you can include them with any animation in your project. When you've chosen the variables that you want to use, they will be added to the timeline view and your animation is ready to be edited. You can drag and slide around animation blocks to adjust when they start and how long they last, or open a menu from the animation block that shows more options. With a few steps, you will be able to create animations that are easy to work with and that show off a professional look that you can customize to your needs. Some of the added features in the Storyboard Suite 3.0 allow you to improve performance and stay more organized, too. A key feature allows you to reduce the unused areas of an image where alpha is being used. When you see an image on screen, typically what you're seeing are the RGB channels, but sometimes images also include an alpha channel. When you're not hardware accelerated, an image with its alpha set to zero in the foreground has to redraw everything that's in its respective background which results in an image being drawn twice that sometimes doesn't need to be, and this will lower your performance. Now with the image trim and image split feature, you can maintain the same look while improving performance, and the best part of all is that it's as simple as clicking a button. The split image feature is great for reducing transparent pixels within the center of an image, and the image trim feature looks for images that it can remove transparent pixels from by cropping your image while making sure that it's not affecting any areas that are being drawn. To use the image split feature, select the image from your palette and press the split image icon. A menu will appear indicating the percentage of transparent pixels that can be trimmed by splitting your one image into multiple images. On a whole, there will be less alpha blending and you will improve performance on your targeted device. A feature very similar to this is to merge multiple control images into one image. If you select a control that has several image render extensions that can be merged together, just right-click that control, then go to Manage, and select Merge Control Images. Then you'll be left with a control that is called Consolidated Control, and an image with the same name as the control will appear in your image directory. If you add multiple controls that only need to be one single control, you can select all of them from the application model, right-click them, then go to Manage and choose Merge Controls. The control that's at the top in the stack will keep the same name, and add the image render extensions from the other controls as its own render extensions. These features will help you maintain a well-organized project. Creating an app that is multilingual with Storyboard Designer 3.0 is easy to do with the new Create and Apply Translation feature. With the click of a button, you're ready to apply a translation to any text that you have prepared. Text that you've prepared only needs a variable assigned to it. When you've finished, all you need to do is click the button for creating a translation CSV file. All of the content of your CSV file will be in one language, and that will be one of your language sets. With one set prepared, creating additional language sets is simple. In the Navigator view of your workspace, open the Translations folder in your project and you'll see the CSV file you've created. If you make a copy of that file in the Translations folder, you can open it with the text editor, and then edit to the language you want to translate to. When your language sets are complete, switching between languages couldn't be easier. Just click the button to apply existing translation, and select the language you want to use. You can switch between languages while you're developing your project, 
and also set your project to change language at runtime too. Now let's preview some of the sample custom shaders. Here is a normal view of an app, but now with custom shaders we can achieve different looks like this view of a sepia tone. You can generate other interesting effects like the spotlight shader, add further functionality to your application with the zoom, or even create a ripple effect. You can also apply custom shaders to text. Here we can see a control with a text render extension that has an outer glow effect that's being applied. Adding custom shaders is another big step forward allowing your applications to be presented with more finesse in Storyboard Designer. With Storyboard 3.0, if you have an iOS developer account, you can prepare a prototype for your iOS device. After setting up code design, as well as a code signing certificate, you only need the following. The device ID of the product you're running on, the identifiers of the applications that you're making, and a provisioning profile. When you're all set up, you're ready to get started with the iOS export feature. Just go to File, Export, and select Export as a native iOS application. After you select the model file that you want to use, you can set your application name and add your company identifier, and you're also given options to set native application properties, like landscape or portrait, or application scaling, or whether or not you want to use a display title bar. When you continue, you can set your runtime options, including your signing identity and provisioning profile. You can also add custom icons and launch screens from this menu. When you're ready, just click Finish, and from there, your app file gets created. After you've completed your iOS export, navigate to your project folder to find the app file that you've just created. An easy way to add it to your iTunes library is to drag and drop to the iTunes window, and it will automatically be added to your list of apps. Then, when you connect your iOS device, go to the tab for Apps, and there you should see your application in the app list. To install to your device, just click the Install button and then go to the bottom right and press Apply to sync the app with your device. When the installation is finished, your iOS device will be able to run your app. Create the applications that let you showcase your ideas. Develop and refine your designs in Storyboard and then use them on your targeted device. You can generate rich animations, display 3D models, and build the creative solutions that will enrich the user experience save yourself time, stay more organized, and achieve greater performance with these great features in the Storyboard Suite 3.0.